James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. We have often been told that to be pro-life, we must oppose the death penalty. But is that true? The Bible says, woe unto him that takes the life of the innocent. Being pro-life means protecting the innocent. But there is a powerful industry in America built on snuffing out innocent life. There's no question that for those that are engaged in abortion in the industry, it's about money. We examine the sanctity of human life, the death penalty, and the abortion industry on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Many people think of Planned Parenthood as a benign organization that provides needed services for women. But is that true? On today's program, you will discover what God says about the value of human life and we will show you another side of Planned Parenthood, the largest abortion provider in America, which is now expanding its presence in our public schools, including taking over sex education in many of them. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb takes a closer look. Planned Parenthood has extended their reach beyond just the abortion clinic on the corner uh, and beyond just uh, uh, those who may make the choice to go to them for, for uh, birth control. They are very active within America's schools and, uh, and in providing sex education for American young people. If you'll just slow down the rush and pressure of your feelings a little, then judgment has a better chance to take hold. When most parents hear about sex education, they, they immediately think back to their gym teacher, you know, giving them some of the basic facts of human biology. Um, but that's not what is being taught today in our schools. Asking for consent can actually be kind of sexy. Want to show me your bedroom? Show me where you want me to touch you. Do you want to help me take these clothes off? Uh, it is expanded to where, in some cases, 70 hours of instruction in not really understanding our sexual uh, makeup in terms of the biological realities of man and female, male and female. Uh, rather, it is, it is basically how to engage in sex. It's a tutorial on uh, sexual activity. And in fact, much of the material put forth by Planned Parenthood, put forth by the Human Rights Campaign, uh, promoted by the Southern Poverty Law Center, quite frankly, is pornographic, and it is poisoning the minds of our children. There's a, a story out of a rural Virginia county where parents learned that their ninth grade daughters had been shown a Planned Parenthood sex ed video um, about how to pleasure their sex partners. Um, and focusing on certain sexual organs of their partners. And uh, pr the video promoted the use of sex toys and other th I, I, things I can't even mention. If there are parents today who think that uh, when we talk about sex education in public schools in 2020, we're just talking about where babies come from, they need to be, re need to be educated <laughs> because sex education today is not uh, is not your parents or your grandparents' sex education. Um, sex education uh, has gradually become uh, something that is designed to promote a very specific agenda, really the agenda of the sexual revolution. We've collected stories from all over the country about younger and younger kids being uh, taught about the three kinds of intercourse which I won't get into, but you can imagine what these kids are being taught about. Even if a parent opts their child out of 
sex education or refuses to opt them in to sex education, their child may still be exposed to radical teachings promoting the LGBT agenda uh, in other classes, uh, in history classes, in English classes, in, in virtually any class that they take that are uh, promoting the teaching of LGBT history um, as, a, as a social science elective or even a mandatory class, uh, rather than just talking about these issues within sex ed. Planned Parenthood boasts that they are now the nation's leader in sex education in our schools. Critics note that we should follow the money, and when it comes to Planned Parenthood, there's a lot of money to follow. One of the most striking aspects of sex education as it pertains to Planned Parenthood and conflict of interest, if you will, is Planned Parenthood, the doors are open in our public schools for them to come in and teach comprehensive sexual education, which is basically code for um, sexual activity. Now, think about this for a moment. Planned Parenthood, the largest abortion provider in the nation, receiving about a half billion dollars a year in taxpayer funds, is going into our schools and teaching kids how to engage in quote unquote safe sex, which we know there's no such thing. One of the things Planned Parenthood has been successful in doing is getting abortion into sex ed lessons. Abortion is taught as a positive option for an unplanned pregnancy. This is a pipeline for them in terms of their biggest money-making activity is abortion. And so they are encouraging kids to engage in activity which is going to result in pregnancy, which results in those seeking abortions. This is a money maker for Planned Parenthood. And, and under any other circumstance, people would be uh, screaming foul that there is a conflict of interest, but yet we continue to allow Planned Parenthood to operate with impunity in our schools. These sex ed lessons will also talk about secret abortions and um, how teens have the right to a secret abortion without their parents' knowledge. Um, and in my county, the sex ed lessons uh, say that there are lawyers, free lawyers that you can get who will take you to a judge to get approval for that secret abortion. If Planned Parenthood is in your school or in your child's school, they're going to be promoting their agenda of the sexual revolution, uh, promoting that, um, that everyone should be sexually active as long as they use birth control, that if they, birth control fails, that everyone, every uh, woman should have access to abortion. And they're gonna be teaching that to your children uh, when, when they're permitted to take part in sex education in schools. And now Planned Parenthood is trying to get clinics established in public schools. The philosophy in the public schools today will become the philosophy of the culture tomorrow. Planned Parenthood is not only the nation's leading sex educator, they are also the nation's leading abortion provider. This is not some poorly funded organization. We're talking about billions of dollars. Um, Planned Parenthood alone has $1.9 billion in assets. They are receiving more than half a billion dollars in taxpayer money from us each year from the government. Um, so it, it is an industry. It's a money-making business. They, you know, they are technically a nonprofit, but as I was told by my supervisor, nonprofit is simply a tax status, not a business model. Recently, with reaction to the coronavirus shutting down much of the country and with federal bailouts for small businesses in the payroll protection program, somehow Planned Parenthood was able to get millions of dollars of COVID-19 bailout funds. And some on the left want them to receive even more of our money. Well, we've, we've known that Nancy Pelosi sees government and the growth of government as a good thing. The pandemic crisis has given her the opportunity to realize all of her dreams to fund various left-wing causes that have nothing to do with the pandemic crisis, but afford an opportunity to pay people, increase government dependency, and advance the Democratic, the left-wing Democratic uh, agenda. 
As Americans began to look at the implementation of the payroll protection program, pro-lifers were shocked to discover that Planned Parenthood had got their hands on over $80 million of this money. Now this is money intended to keep businesses open during the time of the COVID crisis, keep them from shutting their doors, and here's Planned Parenthood exploiting this program and taking money in even as their abortion numbers are climbing during the COVID crisis. In fact, Planned Parenthood went so far as to open a new abortion facility in Waukegan, Illinois, even as they were getting this money designed to keep places from shutting down. So that's particularly galling for businesses that are trying to keep their doors open for Planned Parenthood to be having grand openings and taking in over $80 million from the federal government. There's no question that for those that are engaged in abortion in the industry, it's about money. They're not in it for altruistic reasons. They're certainly not in it for women. They use the rhetoric of women, women's health, the best interest of women. They have no interest in women. If they did, they would want to have informed consent. They'd want to have the women have an informed choice, which means to have that woman absolutely know what she's about ready to do to her body and to her child. They would be in favor of ultrasounds being shown to women. They're opposed to all of that, and the reason is, is because they're interested only in the business side of abortion that makes millions and millions of dollars for these individual abortion providers. Planned Parenthood does not speak for women. They are not the voice of women. All you have to do is look at where they make their money and how they exploit women and how they profit in every way possible, including breaking the laws in order to harvest and sell the body parts of aborted babies. They are not the voice of women and they don't speak for us. Planned Parenthood's work now expanding into our schools is premised upon a lie. The lie is that the child in the womb is not a human being created in the image of God, but rather a disposable product of conception that can be discarded as we choose. Indeed, this so-called choice is the evil conceit of the entire pro-abortion movement. But Dr. Kennedy helps us see the truth in this portion of his classic message, Thou Shalt Do No Murder. When we come in the 20th chapter of Exodus to the Ten Commandments, we read in the beginning of the second table of the law in our relationships to one another, these four simple, single, syllabled words, Thou Shalt not kill. Are these four simple words all that simple? I remember a few decades ago seeing a lot of college students marching around various places and many of them holding up placards which said, thou shalt not kill, indicating that they believed that the Vietnam War was prohibited by the scripture. We also have seen many people protesting in front of abortion centers carrying signs that said, thou shalt not kill. So maybe those simple words aren't quite as simple as we might have taken them to be. Now it's interesting, I think, that in Hebrew, there are about nine Hebrew words for killing. Moses passed over all of those except one, and that one is ratzach, which means murder. Always means murder. He passed over eight other words that mean to kill, to slaughter, to sacrifice, to slay, usually talking about animal sacrifices. But here he comes to the word murder which means therefore that the text should be translated as it is translated in almost every modern English translation of the Bible, thou shalt do no murder. We read something from the previous book, Genesis, which was given a command given by God right after the flood, where he said, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he man. Because man, by the way, unlike a chicken or a pig, is the only creature made in the image of God and therefore is of extreme value. Are you not of 
more value than these, said Christ, referring to the birds of the air. There it says that man is to, to shed the blood of murderers. That murder is such a grievous sin because it is an attack upon those things that are made in the image of God. It is indirectly an attack on God himself. So what does thou shalt not kill mean? Does it mean that if a person has been convicted of a capital crime and has murdered somebody else, that we can wave a placard saying thou shalt not kill and they are pro prohibited from doing so? Not at all. They are exactly doing what God told in a universal law given to the human race, which has never been countermanded. By man shall his blood be shed. It's not waiting till the final judgment, but it is to be done by man. He has slain another person made in God's image, and he has forfeited his own. So it does not apply there. Well, how about abortion? Is that a violation of the law or not? I remember one time years ago, I spoke on the subject of abortion and a couple from up north came out the door and said to me, I had just said that abortion was wrong, contrary to the scriptures. And they said, I assume therefore that you do not believe in capital punishment if you are pro-life. I said, uh, au contraire. In fact, I do believe in capital punishment. He said, you're not consistent. I said, oh really? Well, let me ask you, do you believe in abortion? He said, absolutely. It's a woman's right. A woman has a right over her body, which of course, in a certain sense is true, and in other senses is not. One, it's not her body she's killing. It is another entity, another being, has different DNA than she does. In fact, about 50% of them are a different sex than she is. And by the way, a number of geneticists had a meeting some years ago to consider the question, when does a person, a human being, become a human being? And after spending a number of days studying that, they released their conclusions, which said, there is no point in the development of the fetus where we can say yesterday this was not a human being and today it is. There is no point that is a human being. Well, I said to my friends at the front door of the church, I said, you believe in abortion? Yes. And I said, do you believe in capital punishment? They said, absolutely not. I said that it seems to me that the difference between the two of us is very simple. I believe in sparing the life of the innocent and taking the life of the guilty, whereas you believe in taking the life, killing the innocent and sparing the guilty. But the Bible says, Woe unto him that takes the life of the innocent. Woe unto him that calls evil good and good evil. And that's exactly what we have been doing in this country. We have been condemning the innocent and sparing the guilty. And that God is most definitely not pleased with. No, that's not what the sixth commandment means at all. Let us not only avoid the sins condemned in this commandment, but let us endeavor to fulfill the other side of that, the positive loving side. Someone has well said that the greatest commentary on the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill, is found in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, that marvelous letter by Paul which says love and defines it and describes what the opposite of murder is. Our responsibility to love our neighbor, to love the stranger, to love our enemies and to minister to their needs. God grant us the grace to do it. It's not easy, but 
It is a blessed thing. And God will see that those who are guilty will be punished and those who have been obedient will be blessed. And that's why Christ came into the world. And that's why his father poured out his wrath for sin upon his own beloved son and offers freely to pardon and grant eternal life to all of those that will trust in him. There upon that cross, the human race murdered the creator of the world who died for the creature's sin that we might find life and joy forevermore. We live in a culture that has completely turned the truth upside down. We have become so morally confused that we see cold-blooded murderers as worth more protection than innocent children. All of this is the product of an evolutionary view of human origins that says we are not created in the image of God, but rather we came from the random occurrence of time and chance and matter. If that were true, it would be easy to see human beings as disposable. And this was the guiding principle of Planned Parenthood's founder, Margaret Sanger. Sanger believed that we had a duty to rid the genetic stock of what she called human weeds. She founded Planned Parenthood as the instrument to make that happen. And you need to know the truth about the abortion movement and its malevolent champion, Planned Parenthood. Which is why I want to send you the short book, Killer Angel, a biography of Planned Parenthood's Margaret Sanger by Dr. George Grant as our thanks for your generous donation. James Robeson says, George Grant's depth of knowledge and clarity of thought will impact your life and sharpen your views. Contact us right away to get your copy of this eye-opening book. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free, 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. And if you are able to give a generous donation of $40 or more, we will send you the short biography, Killer Angel, plus the special DVD expose, Merchants of Death, Planned Parenthood and the Abortion Industry. These are difficult subjects, but they're important because it's absolutely vital that you understand the true nature of the abortion industry. And it is an industry. Records show that Planned Parenthood took in $1.5 billion in taxpayer funding in a recent three-year period. Yet they have been implicated in illegal activity, selling baby body parts, and they have disproportionately targeted black Americans and other minority populations for abortion. This DVD program uncovers the facts that the mainstream media will never tell you. Considering the fact that Planned Parenthood is firmly in the pocket of one political party, you will want to discover the truth in this hard-hitting program and to share it with your friends in advance of the November elections. We will send you this short book, Killer Angel, a biography of Planned Parenthood's Margaret Sanger, as our thanks for your generous donation. And we will send you the book, plus the DVD documentary, Merchants of Death, Planned Parenthood in the Abortion Industry, as our thanks for your generous donation of $40 or more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677, or 
go online to djkm.org. During a national crisis over perceived racism, the one subject nobody seems to want to discuss is the connection between racism and abortion. Protesters nationwide have torn down statues of the likes of Robert E. Lee and George Washington for their alleged racism. Yet statues of Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger stand in the Smithsonian Institution and at Boston's Old South Meeting House, completely untouched. Perhaps our mob of newly woke protesters is unaware that Sanger once wrote in a letter, quote, we do not want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. She spoke at a KKK rally in 1926, urging these views and wrote in her autobiography that she believed she had accomplished her purpose in life as she received a dozen invitations to speak to similar groups. Friends, Margaret Sanger continues to rule Planned Parenthood from the grave. Today, black babies are aborted at a rate five times higher than white babies in America. And Planned Parenthood has strategically placed 79% of its abortion facilities within walking distance of minority populations. As if we needed further proof of Planned Parenthood's genocide when the state of Indiana passed a ban on obtaining abortions because of the sex, race, or potential disabilities of the child, Planned Parenthood went to court, you guessed it, to explicitly defend the right of a mother to abort based on the race of her child. So where is the outrage against Planned Parenthood? founded and premised on the goals of the eugenics movement. Perhaps it's because what we are seeing play out before us is not about combating racism at all, but rather accomplishing the Marxist goals of destroying the family, tearing down traditional morality and upending our constitutional order. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. God has said, thou shalt not steal. And yet, tragically, stealing has become epidemic. Every demographic polled says they support voter ID, and yet, all over the country, voter ID laws are under attack. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.